Welcome to the Porn Reboot Podcast, where you learn practical tips to gaining control over your porn or sex addiction. I'm your host, J.K. Amazy, Certified Sex and Porn Addiction Recovery Coach. Welcome to the episode. In today's episode, I'm going to be sharing with you 10 lies you tell yourself about your porn addiction. And the reason why I decided to make that the topic of today's episode is because I recently started receiving emails from a lot of men who were asking me for advice. But I noticed that there was a common theme that was shared in all these emails, and that was the man would say that he has a porn addiction, he would describe all the symptoms of his porn addiction, but he would say that he simply needed advice because his situation was not as bad as some of the situations that I described of some of my clients. So for instance, maybe he struggles with PIED, porn-induced erectile dysfunction. He is no longer attracted to his wife. But in his email, he will imply that, well, My situation, JK, isn't as bad as some of your other clients. I'm not cheating on my wife. I am not having sex with men when I identify as a straight man. So my situation is not that bad. No. The reality is if you struggle with a compulsive behavior, you struggle with a compulsive behavior. The interesting thing is that many of us have a habit of just lying to ourselves about the severity of our situation. Today, I'm going to be addressing head-on the 10 most common lies that we tell ourselves. And, you know, for those of us who struggle with porn addiction, the fight can be brutal. Multiple relapses over the years, the guilt, the betrayal of our loved ones, erectile dysfunction, and sometimes even acting out in real life. And it can be a rough journey, And sometimes it it is easier to deal with everything by unconsciously telling ourselves lies. And in time, these lies grow and turn out to be a great hindrance to our progress. Sometimes the greatest hindrance to our progress. So we're going to identify them today. The first lie is what I call the powerless lie. Now, no offense to my brothers who are in the 12 steps. I think I've made my position on the 12 steps quite clear. But when you lie to yourself and tell yourself that I can't stop watching pornography, I can't quit, the first thing that it is is a red flag for low self-esteem. And it's most frequently told when you feel that you are completely powerless over your addiction, your compulsive behavior. Many men who have a great self-image and who have great self-esteem as well often walk into groups where powerlessness is one of the central themes and they walk out shortly after. The reason why is not because the group doesn't work, but more often than not, they find themselves surrounded by individuals who have very, very low self-esteem And they're just not used to that powerless concept because more often than not, they've achieved many things in life. They have a great career. They like their lifestyle. They just struggle with this one area of their life. And the concept of powerlessness is quite foreign to them. The reality is that you can quit. You are way more powerful than you imagine. You were born with everything within you that you need to overcome the vast majority of Uh, issues that life may throw your way. There were some rough experiences that you've had in your life that perhaps knocked you down a few notches, but you can still rise. All you need is to get to a point and generate enough momentum that you have a glimpse of freedom. For many men, this is some sort of system that gets you to a point in your recovery that you have never accomplished. Sometimes this could be 90 days of no porn and no masturbation, but without the fear of relapsing in the future. And once you have a taste of it, you're like, wow, I did this and it was almost effortless. Then you develop this excitement about your recovery. You're like, if I can do it for 90 days, then listen, I can do it for a year. And if I can do it for a year, then I'm good to go. I can move on with my life. So there's a saying, I I don't know who this is attributed to exactly, but it says, 
A belief is not an idea that is held by the mind. It is an idea that holds the mind. And I love that quote because I think it really encapsulates that feeling you have when you have tasted uh, a recovery, when you've gotten to a point on your own of following a system where there is proof that you can recover. Once you experience that, nothing's going to stop you. You become possessed. Uh, it feels as if you're possessed. At least that's many of the guys in our groups uh, describe it as. Like, JK, I am so motivated to overcome this because now I believe that I have power over this. So what a lot of men need is proof. Powerlessness is a lie. The second lie is what I call the downplaying lie. So it's when you tell yourself that you must have recovered. And personally, this was one of the biggest obstacles in my recovery journey. See, I would stop watching porn and masturbating for a few weeks. I would feel amazing. And then all these thoughts would slowly begin to creep in. You know, um, things like, you know what? I haven't felt an urge in so long, even though it was probably three weeks. It felt like three months. Well, I must be fine. You know, thank God I don't have some sort of addiction. <laughs> well, guess what that downplaying led to? Well, I fell right back into my cycle of porn and masturbation. Another variation of this lie occurs when you stop watching pornography, but then you try to masturbate. And to your surprise, you find that it's almost impossible to do so without watching porn. So you go back to pornography again. And both of these lies are things we tell ourselves to rationalize our addiction. The third lie is what I call the whitewashing lie. You know, we tell ourselves, you know what, I was, I was drunk or I was hungover. I was high and it was right there. You know, in my college days, um, excessive drinking and uh, smoking weed was pretty much a one-way ticket for me to what I call the masturbation station. No matter how much I wanted to end this behavior, whenever I was under the influence of any sort of substance that changed my consciousness, I would relapse. So for those of you who are trying to give up pornography, control your masturbation, the effects of alcohol and drugs on the process of recovery, the reboot process, cannot be emphasized enough. Once your inhibitions are lowered because of alcohol or marijuana or your, you know, certain senses are chemically heightened, you know, the last vestiges of restraint that you have are going to fly out of the window. So don't put yourself in a situation where you have to whitewash and use the whitewashing lie. The fourth lie is minimizing, lie of minimizing things like, um, <laughs> You know, just a few minutes, you know, I'll just, I'll just pop on and look at something and get a little bit of a rush, you know, and see what's out there. Or you see uh, an attractive actress on TV and you're like, wow, I uh, want to see what she's like in real life. And you, maybe if she has other pictures that are more revealing. So you hop on Instagram. Well, two hours later, 15 tabs later, you're exhausted and disgusted from your porn binge. And that's how it happens. You know, this always escalates. It's usually a time thing. It starts with you crossing a boundary and telling yourself that you're not going to spend so much time on it. And the next thing you know, you're masturbating, you've relapsed. Because what you're doing is you're downplaying and attempting to minimize the actual amount of time that you know you're going to spend on pornography. You know, another variation of this is men who actually get on a porn website and they tell themselves, I'm not going to slip, I'm not going to relapse, I'm just going to edge and watch one video. That never happens. You end up watching a bunch of videos and slipping. The fifth lie is the inflation lie. And, you know, it's when you tell yourself things like, I feel like crap, so I deserve to watch pornography. You know, it's been a crazy stressful day, screw it, I need this for myself. And... Sometimes we inflate a challenging situation and we make it an excuse to binge on pornography and maybe just having a regular stressful day, but you just awfulize it and make it much worse than it seems 
And what that usually means is that you simply haven't developed uh, alternate means of coping with stress. So when you experience above average stress levels, you automatically return to the thing which soothes you the most, okay? So it's important to work on developing positive habits, coping skills that you can turn to at those moments when your triggers kick in. Uh, personally, meditation has worked quite well for me, um, but there are a bunch of other coping skills that you can use. The sixth lie is the implication lie. And <laughs> a common one is um, when you say something like, you know what, my significant other isn't into the things that I'm into. You know, my girlfriend doesn't give blowjobs. He doesn't like anal. Um, yeah, I used to use that one as well, and it almost cost me my relationship. See, it's easy to blame or implicate someone else for your porn habits. It's an easy but a very weak lie. It's also one of the top lies that we tell ourselves before, during, and after we act out our porn fantasies in real life, especially those of you who cross the line and visit escorts or start talking to women on other apps when you're a married man. So, you know, in, in our system, in the porn reboot system, I emphasize that taking responsibility is one of the first steps to giving up pornography. And sadly, that is, especially with regards to this compulsive behavior, it's one of the most challenging thing for men, specifically men who are in relationships to do. Take responsibility. The seventh lie is the privilege lie, and that's what I call it. But an example of this is when you say or you believe that you're a late bloomer, okay? So... Um, you tell yourself, you know what, I'm a late bloomer, I missed out on so much, I got married early, and that's why I'm acting out, you know? <laughs> now, personally, I'll be honest with you, I think I've used all, uh, we're on the seventh lie, I'll tell you guys that I've used all of them, okay? <laughs> These are just 10 lies I came up with. These are lies that I see in my practice with clients, but they're also lies that I used for over 15 years of my addiction. One of the things I used to do early in my career uh, as a recovery coach was I used to help men with their relationships as well. I've moved away from that and I focus a lot more on the recovery aspect. But one of the things I've noticed is that um, there are men who, they're nice guys. And as a result of their conditioning via society, sometimes because of many you know religious reasons, they have not had a lot of sexual experience. So perhaps they met one woman and convinced themselves that she was the love of their life, you know, high school sweetheart or college sweetheart, and they married her and things just aren't working out the way they thought they would and they're afraid, you know, they feel like they are really coming into themselves as men. That means that they are um, starting to make more money, starting to realize that they are attractive, gaining a lot more confidence than they had when they were in their early 20s, and they feel like they're missing out. So they start watching pornography. You have a, a, a problem with pornography, but that causes you to start feeling like the grass is greener on the other side. And again, men who gain success later on in life who develop confidence and improve their self-esteem tend to develop a sense of entitlement when justifying their porn or even sex addiction, okay? So if you're one of those men listening to this podcast and you have a habit of, you know, getting with women, having sex with women outside of your marriage or your committed relationship, Examine yourself and ask yourself if that is fueled by pornography. And one of the easiest ways to start doing this is actually to start cutting back on your porn use and actually see what happens. The eighth lie is, um, I call this the standard lie. <laughs> and um, if we could put it into a sentence, it would be that a man's biology dictates that he should sleep with many attractive women, as many attractive women as possible, or... Every guy does it. Every guy um, has this urge to have sex with as many women as possible. Of course, I am as guilty of using this lie and lying to myself as any other man. And while the statement itself that a man's biology dictates that he should sleep with as many attractive women as possible, while this statement is true to a certain extent, 
When you start painting the picture of pornography being a normal standard part of a man's lifestyle uh, and you use that as an excuse for porn addiction, you are lying to yourself. The truth is that not every man watches pornography and masturbates on a daily basis. In fact, some of the most accomplished men in history stayed very far away from pornography. You know, so that's something that you want to keep in mind. And in the porn reboot system, providing proof is very important. And I give, and I have collected for many years, examples of accomplished men who in their biographies made it a point to mention that they controlled their sexual energy. They stayed away from pornography. They controlled their masturbation. They even controlled their sexual lives. The ninth lie is what I call the non-acceptance lie. Basically, it's telling ourselves that we don't watch porn anymore, but actually we have replaced it with something else. And I used this lie for far too long. My rationalization was that I'm no longer watching pornography, but it's totally okay for me to read erotica or browse through social media looking at attractive women who were in bikinis, you know, or just any sort of image that was arousing. And I wasn't masturbating to them, but I just felt it was an easier way to deal with my strong urges. And that was a lie. I did not accept the fact that it wasn't just pornography, that it was my brain that, had, that needed to rewire. So if you're telling yourself that lie, that, oh, I'm not watching porn, but you're reading erotica, sometimes you're into hentai, sometimes you're into just having your head on swivel and objectifying women everywhere you go, then the reboot process is sabotaged. The moment you replace your addiction to pornography with something else, you know, it's the equivalent of someone who's addicted to cigarettes trying to quit by switching to uh, vaping. It doesn't work. Quitting pornography by rebooting involves completely avoiding and isolating yourself from any habits that may lead to a potential trigger. It involves having a system. It involves setting very, very strong boundaries. And it involves a high level of awareness to different things that might be firing off those neural pathways that uh, were active when you were viewing pornography. And the final lie is what I call the negating lie. And if we were to put that into a, in a sentence, it would say, there is nothing wrong with pornography or playing out my addiction in real life. Now, if you say that, but one day you are attracted to women and you like meeting women and going on dates with them and getting intimate with them, but then you find out that down the line, you are addicted to having sex with escorts or prostitutes and finding them online, then chances are that you're lying to yourself. And the reason why I say this is that there are many men who have reached a point where porn is so normalized in your life. You feel you have a problem with it, but you also want to experience many of the things that you see in pornography. And you realize that the women that you date, normal women, have no interest in any of these things. Maybe you're into cuckoldry. You know, you're into dating women or being in a relationship with a woman and you get off by watching her with another man. You know, and I know there's a bunch of guys like that out there. I'm using that as an example. But you realize that many women won't do it. So you need to go out of your way to find women who will engage in sexual acts that you see in pornography. That right there is a red flag. That is a sign that there is a problem, that you are unable to have a normal, intimate sexual relationship with a woman or multiple women if you're out there dating because your sexual urges and the things that turn you on are no longer normal. You don't realize that your sexual behavior and sexual tastes are escalating. Porn use escalates our porn use and the type of pornography that we watch becomes more and more extreme as our brain craves more stimulation. And negating the effects of pornography is the singular most devastating lie that you can tell yourself. Sometimes you're like, well, maybe I have a problem with it. That was a little too much. I spent a lot on escorts this month. The question I have for you is, what are some of the other lies 
that I did not include here that you frequently tell yourself? I'm very curious to know. Shoot me an email, elevatedrecovery at gmail.com. And if you're at a point in your life where you feel that, hey, JK, I've been lying to myself like crazy. I've crossed the line in my relationship. I'm about to lose my relationship. I don't feel like I can live with myself anymore. And that doesn't mean you're suicidal. It just means that there is so much pain that comes from your out of control sexual behavior that it is with you throughout the day. And you just don't want to live with that constant guilt, shame, and sometimes even fear at the escalation of your behavior. Well, if you would like to speak to me, visit elevatedrecovery.org slash apply and put in an application. And if you're approved, I'll get on a call with you and I'll find out what are some of the things that you've been doing, what has worked for you, what hasn't worked, what are some of the roadblocks, some of the things that are standing in your way. If you would like to learn more about my system, you can download my free ebook, Confessions of a Porn Addict, Seven Secrets of Porn Free Men, where I outline the system that my clients who have been off pornography and masturbation from two to five years have used to control their out-of-control sexual behavior. I'm JK, your brother in this struggle. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this episode of the Porn Reboot Podcast. I'll speak to you later this week.